Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to St. Mark Catholic Church. Today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. At vintage time, the master will return to receive the harvest. May we bear fruit in plenty and be pleasing in his sight by living lives that are marked by love and respect. This mass is being offered for Evelyn Kvetch. Please forgive me if I mispronounce the name wrong. Our celebrant is Father Michael. Out of reverence for our sacred worship and respect for those around you, please silence all cell phones and devices at this time. Thank you. Let us stand now as we begin our celebration. When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve, preserve his life. 
Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches his hum the humble his way. Remember A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness, or out of vain, vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have you in the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped? Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He replied and said, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, 
You did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, today's gospel passage speaks about the two sons. The one obedient, the other one is not. Something similar we find in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15, the parable of the prodigal son. The son who was disobedient to his father collected us all his wealth and went away and squandered all those. Later on, coming to his senses, he realizes how good his father was and he returns back home. Unlike that kind of a story, which is a lengthy story, today's parable is a short version of it, but probably Luke is aiming at the same effect that it should make on the believing community. God wants us to be obedient. And in the course of our commitment to God as Christians and disciples of Christ, our Savior, we begin well, but very often we find ourselves in a messy situation in the sense that we are disobedient now and then. You know, we always know that, or we always agree on this point that, you know, the first impression is the best impression. We, we think about that very often, we speak about it. We meet someone new and then the first impression that we have with them, we have a high opinion about them. If it is bad, it is bad, in fact. So, but when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to obedience to God's ways and faithfulness to God's will, that saying, that phrase doesn't work. But it cannot be like you start with an earnestness and receive baptism and then you live so well and then you just go backwards. When it comes to God and our commitment to God's ways to the kingdom of God, it is always yes, and it is always obedience and faithfulness that is demanded of us. And that is why we cannot say like, no, okay, today is okay. It's like saying, today I could be a good Christian, tomorrow I could be the other way. That would be a madness in fact. And that's why God calls us to commitment. And if you ask me uh, about the, the sons, two sons in the Gospel passage, uh, which one is uh, the bad one, uh, all of us would agree. The, the second one who said, yes, I would go, and he did not go. So uh, 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 there's, a, there's an uh, urge to be like the other one who said in the first place, I would go, uh, uh, I will not go, and then he goes and does what his father wanted him to do. We may like to be like him. But if you, for a deeper understanding as Christians into the scripture, we will realize, you know, Jesus is not calling us to be either one. No. He is calling us to be beyond these two people. In other words, not, not the one like, you know, who says yes and then it doesn't. Neither uh, like the one who says no and he does. That's, that's a good way, probably. But Jesus is calling us to the better way of being a disciple, which would mean always. Always willing to be obedient to God's ways, always willing to be faithful to God's kingdom and its ways. Going to the first reading, we do see there, there's a problem there, you know, right in between the middle of the exile period in Babylon, the people around that time are questioning the punishment that God gave to the people, putting them into exile uh, 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 by deportation to Babylon. They are saying, our fathers and our forefathers sinned. Why are we being punished? Why are we being chastised? Probably these kind of questions that we get a lot from our grandkids or the kids, you know, in these days. Why are we suffering for somebody else's fault? On the one hand, what they say is right, we are not, we are not bad at so why are we struggling? On the other hand, if the Lord would question us back, okay, if they are bad, if it is their fault, are you living good? 
Or are you living the same way? They compromise obedience and when are the false gods and chastising them but what about your lives? Are you not compromising obedience and going after the other things then coming to the living God? <clears throat> so, you know, we all know the plain view how it goes. In the book of, uh, book of Genesis we do see when God comes to the, the garden and he finds these two people missing there, so he searches for them and he finds Adam, both of them are hiding there. And the question is, well, why are they hiding? This, this things happen. And they say, why did you do that? No, not me, the woman you gave me. So blame it on the woman. And then the says, why did you do, do this Eve? And she said, not me, the serpent tempted me and I, I fell. So blame game begins right there and it continues every day. We all fall prey to this. Today we have too many things to say. And when we say things, when we have opinions, when, we, when, when people ask explanation to our actions, we have too much ifs and buts. Always trying to find some way to escape, escape route. All of us are victim to that. Southern way of temptation that the devil puts on us and we fail. We fall to his temptations and we try to find answers to our, our, our mistakes. It is all human weakness. But God calls us to a commitment which is beyond human weakness. You know, break human weakness and be obedient to my ways. He did that through so many prophets. He spoke to them, people. Don't, don't have that shallow commitment to me. Your shallow faithfulness doesn't lead you anywhere. If you are truly obedient to my ways, if you are truly commitment to my ways, you'll find yourself in the best place. The place that I have assigned for my own. And that's why in the second reading again, the writing to the Philippians, St. Paul reminds them where it is said that the Philippine uh, Christian community uh, uh, was like monuments of the self-righteous people. And that's why when you think about self-righteousness, what comes is like, you know, vain glory of oneself. And you know, somebody would say, uh, a lot of people have forgotten the Trinity, but they have today's modern Trinity is like me, myself and I. So vain glory or self-glorification is based on selfishness and arrogance and pride. The Philippine community was known for it. And that's why Paul is addressing to them. He said, them, put off your vain glory. And then what do we do? Be like Christ. And that's why he keeps Jesus as the example. The poem that we have, Christological poem that we have about Jesus. Jesus, even though he was son of God, God, he emptied himself of his, of his nature and took on a human form, humbled himself to the extent of dying. And that is why at the end of the day we find God exalts him to that position. Every knee shall bend, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is a savior. Jesus doesn't have the self-glory, but God glorifies him for his obedience and faithfulness. Again, you and I are called to do that. When we are obedient like Christ, when we are faithful like Christ, doing the will of the Father, come what may, we will be glorified by God. We cannot glorify ourselves. I love the expression when the, when the deacon at the end of the Mass, you know, dismisses the community at the end of the Mass, you know, go, and there are four phrases to that, like go in peace or and then one of those is like, go and glorify the Lord by your lives. What a great expression. You and I are being nourished by the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, in the church. And then we are led out of the church to go. It is so beautiful to watch all those four phrases in the Missal. All says, go. Your experience here is over. Go and live what you witnessed here. Namely, Jesus in humility breaking himself for sinners. Do we deserve it? No. 
but he does it. That's God's goodness. So therefore, we are called to humble ourselves like Christ. Put off our pride and selfishness and arrogance and put on humility to serve one another. And that way, make God available to one another. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is speaking to the authorities of the time, the elders and the priests. And he, he points out to them, you say, you say yes to the Father, but your ways are no. Whereas the simple people, prostitutes and tax collectors, they give in to the message, benefit from the message, and enter into heaven. But you will find yourself outside. So as Baptist Christians, we all need to question ourselves. My, my, my life as a Baptist Christian, is it okay? Is it better? Am I walking on the path that Jesus is leading me? Or am I just living a normal Christian life? We have to ask these questions. And today in the world, there are too many people who claim to be Catholics, claim to be Christians, but their lives are far from even knowing Christ. By forever living Christ. Falsehood all around. It is at this time, you know, the scripture calls us to be the best sons possible. Ones who can say always yes and follow that yes in action. Let us pray for one another that God's, God's grace be upon us to be faithful people, humble and gentle, serving one another, loving and caring for one another. May God be with us. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of God, and the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all things, God from God, and light from light, from God from God, from God from God, from God from our being, from the substantial of the Father, through Him and all things for me, for us men and for us men. of authority. May the Lord lead them in their efforts toward protecting, protecting all human life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. For those in positions of authority, may God lead them in their efforts toward protecting all human life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. For the unemployed and underemployed, May God in his goodness help them to find work that will provide for their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we grow in mercy and compassion, joyfully imitating Christ our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, may they rejoice with the saints in God's everlasting kingdom. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God. God. We thank you, Father, for your steadfast love and abundant grace. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your holy will. We ask through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the prayer we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through him. The host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we is Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that the taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Archbishop, Peter is assistant bishop in all the clergy. Remember your servant, Evelyn Kevak, whom you have called from this work yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Margaret, St. Peter, our patrons, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to turn the light, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be coerced in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Registration for Spark Kids and Youth for the year 2020 to 21. And First Communion and Confirmation classes closes on September 27, which is tomorrow. And sign up online at the parish websites or come to St. Mark Church between 1.30 and 3 p.m. tomorrow, 27th of September. There will be a meeting of the St. Mark Administrative Council on Thursday, October 1st at 6 p.m. in the Parish Center. First Friday adoration for the month of October will be this Friday at 9 a.m. at St. Peter's. Mass is at 8.30. After the Mass, we have the adoration. First Saturday devotion will be coming Saturday Beginning at 8.30 a.m., we have the confessions heard and the rosary prayed and then followed by the Mass. That also will happen at St. Peter's. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to glorify our Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. So we do pray the prayer to St. Michael at the end of the Mass. From this weekend, we have the prayer printed on the, in the worship sheet that you have, so we could pray that together. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. 